In this set of movies, we'll discuss component diagrams, which provide a physical view of your system. So let's start by asking what's a component. A component is basically a modular part of a system. In other words, components are a system's building blocks. Now you can define a component as an autonomous, encapsulated part of the software which can be reused and replaced. And components also provide one or more interfaces, which enables components to interact and to use each other's services. So when thinking about components, it can be helpful to think of an example such as third-party software, for example an online shopping cart. That's a chunk of code that functions as a module. You can plug it into one system and then you can take it out and replace it with a different online shopping cart, or you can also reuse it in another system. That sort of modular use of your code indicates a component. And of course, that would also apply to any similar module of code that you build yourself, not just third-party software. A component is similar in some ways to a subsystem, and indeed, subsystem is a stereotype that you can use with components, as you'll see in a later movie. For now, just keep in mind that component diagrams capture the high-level, reusable parts of a system and the relationships among those parts. In UML2, the notation for a component is the old familiar rectangular classifier box and as you can see this looks very much like the classifier in a class diagram. And although there's some debate about the exact difference between a class and a component, you can think of a component as a specialized kind of class. Now there's three different ways that you can show components in UML2 notation. One is the classifier with this icon up in the corner, and this symbol is the notation that was used for a component in UML 1.4. That's no longer recommended as the notation for a component in UML 2, but it's a reminder that this is a component that we're dealing with and not a class. You can also show a component by using the classifier with a stereotype, the component keyword. You can also use both the icon and the keyword. Remember that in UML, a rectangular classifier without a stereotype represents a class. So you do need to include either the component keyword or the icon up in the corner, or both if you really, really want to make sure that viewers know that they're looking at a component and not at a class. So component diagrams show a physical view of the system illustrating dependencies that the software has on other software components. And components interact with each other through interfaces. In the next movie, we'll take a look at interfaces as well as how to depict them.